So a sphere is one of the most difficult things to print in all of 3D printing. So in this video, we're gonna go through eight or nine ways to actually print a sphere and have it be just as crisp as possible. So why are spheres so tough? Well, the sphere is mainly difficult because it has no flat edge to it. Everything is perfectly curved. And whenever you have a curved surface straight against the bottom, you have it go from basically horizontal up to a little bit less horizontal and then finally into an angle that works. But that means that you have all sorts of issues with it. So we're gonna go ahead and show you a few of the other models. We have eight different versions here, but let's go ahead and start with the most basic. The most basic version of printing a sphere is to set the sphere down on the print bed and then let some support generate around it. And that is this one right here. But the issue with this is, is that you end up with this kind of unintentional little flat side here. And very often the support is not even that good. If we pop that off, you can kind of see how you have this deformation on the bottom. It's not bad, but there's this outer ring to where it kind of goes from flat up to starting to curve. And then you have some shrinkage there and it gets really tough to make it really clean and crisp. And then of course you have that little flat edge, which just kind of messes with the look of the sphere. But from the side, and hopefully you can see it here, from the side you can see that it sort of has this bowing in it, kind of this ripple, the suck in on it. It's just not that great. So the standard way of printing a sphere generally is not very good because you just don't end up with anything very crisp. This style of putting the sphere down on the bed is also super unreliable because if that first tiny little part doesn't stick really well, then the whole sphere can get ruined. Now you can get around this and you can just design it with a small flat on the bottom anyway at the correct angle. So you design this so that at 60 degrees, that's where you cut off the bottom of the sphere. So you can get something that is much more crisp and much more intentional looking without all the randomness of the overhangs that come with a standard sphere. And then if it's sitting down on the table, it's fine. No one would ever know it's not a regular sphere anyway. And you get rid of this messy little pockmark on the side and you instead have a stand base. But this isn't technically a sphere, so we can't talk about this. All right, so if we want to eliminate that little pockmark, that bed surface area spot, then what we can do is lift the sphere up off the bed, like what we've done with here. Now, some slicers don't allow you to lift it off the bed. So in order to design a sphere that is lifted up to where it's entirely supported, what you can do is you can design it with a disc down against the bed and then space the sphere out from that. That way you know when this model is uploaded, that sphere will always be printed up off of the bed and then support can generate underneath it. And let's see how that looks. Uh, it's a little bit sticky. There we go. So this is when it is totally supported straight from the bottom. You know, it's not that bad. It actually has a little bit less deformation than the other one. And you don't have as clear of a dot. So this is the one that was against the bed. And this is the one that was sitting up in supported area. That's not bad. This one would probably be a little bit easier to sand down if you were doing that. But this one, it's not that much of a difference because you still have kind of that infinite overhang to where the layer lines are just spaced so far apart that you're gonna get some sort of deformation down there on the bottom. And you can see it right there a little bit. They both kind of have it. So supporting the sphere really isn't quite the correct solution because you have this really flat surface that then really gradually starts to accelerate and you get this deformation as it transitions up. So it's not the greatest situation there. The other issue with supported spheres is that the sphere isn't really sitting on the support. There is spacing between the sphere and that support, which again can lead to failure because if your support is too far away from the sphere, then it can just break loose and the sphere falls off the support and doesn't print really well. Now, again, I wanna emphasize why this is so important. The design of objects is so important because you might wanna have them mass produced. You might wanna upload them to a service like portals where they can be printed and shipped straight to customers for you. And in order to do that, you cannot rely on print settings. So the best way to make a part that is manufacturable is to make a part that can be made anywhere, anytime. And you do that inside the CAD. So it's really, really important to make sure that you are designing parts that are reliable and robust so that they can be uploaded to any system at all and be produced reliably. So how do we get that sphere held down? Well, the very first thing you can do is just design a little spike up into it that holds the sphere up where you want it to be, but then it holds the base of the sphere steady and solid so that it can't move around inside the support and you can get something a lot crisper. That is what one of these is. So if I twist this, you will see down on the bottom is a small circle inside of there because I designed this peg straight off this bat. And this is a little bit of a fatter peg. So let's go ahead and see if I can just leave the peg there. You can see it comes off very cleanly, very nicely. And you can see the sphere still kind of has that deformation. And since this peg is so fat, the issue that you run into 
is that you now have a hole in the bottom of the sphere rather than a flat edge. So we haven't gained a whole lot because again, that outer edge, that transition basically from like 30 degrees to 45 degrees, you end up with this shrinkage. And you could tune slicer settings for until the cows come home, but then as soon as material or the color changes, then it would all break down. So you gotta find something really reliable. I went ahead and made another version of this that has a really small pin on the bottom. So this is super small pin. So at least now you don't have the hole on the bottom. And if we take a look at that, that doesn't look terrible. Like again, you still have that deformation ring right there or so. But that smaller pin did what we wanted it to do. It held it steady. You now have a nice little reliable print that has auto-generated support around it. But again, we're not to a perfect sphere yet, and we're trying to get to a perfect sphere. So what can we do? Well, it seems like the slicer is actually what's stopping us from doing a good job on this. It is the thing that is giving us all the guff because it can't generate support that is tight enough or cool enough or has enough room around it. So what I did is I went ahead and designed the support myself. So we'll see how this works. This is a, a very simple version of design support. Again, the sphere up in the air, that cylinder underneath is an offset design that is 0.2 millimeters from the sphere. But the sphere is not simply resting on it. I didn't want that. The auto-generated support is a sphere simply resting on it. You can see that curved uh, su surface right there that the sphere sits into. But that's obviously not working based on all our other things. So I designed this support to have several sprues inside of there that hold on to the sphere. Because if we have this issue where it's shrinking right here, and then what we need to do is hold it so that it can't shrink in and move. So we'll see how this looks. I haven't actually seen if one of these works right. So we'll just twist, give this a twist. Oh, that felt really good. So all the sprues just snapped off and it broke loose. And you can see right here, that's the, the support itself. That all looks really nice. It looks really crisp and clean. And it's also really easy to post process because it's a solid thing. But there's that deal. And you know what? Here's, here's an interesting situation. So the shrink line, the shrink line problem that we've been having on all of these appears to be right where you transition from support to the regular sphere. So it's not really contact with the support. It's actually, it actually seems to be more of a cooling issue. But right here, you can see this is the one that has the design support here. And you can see just a little bit, just a little shrink line right there, which is directly in line with where the support disconnected. But the bottom of it looks really, really good. Like, so this is one supported with the pen, the fat pen. And you can see it's a little bit more deformation from just standard supports, whereas the designed one is just really, really consistent. And that's again, is a 0.2 spacing all the way around. That looks really good. Like, I think that's really warm. But we've discovered now that there is a shrinkage problem. When it's down in the support, there's not much airflow going by, but then as soon as it becomes exposed to the air, then you get a different amount of shrinkage and your sphere kind of starts to deform and you get that kind of shrink line. So what if we never had it exposed to the air? Again, you can't do anything with standard supports, but you can do something with design. So I designed this. This is basically a set of fin supports that does the same things as that cylinder that we were looking at before, but Hopefully these fins all the way around the outer edges will give it much more um, airflow while it's printing. Other than that, all the spacing is the same. Alrighty. <laughs> oh, this is fascinating. So this is what the support looks like. Again, just a, a finned star pattern holding it up. But if you look at the bottom, you can see the star pattern you can see where the shrinkage happening because right here next to where the stuff is holding it up, heat is condensed. Uh, there's a lot of material to be cooled down and even when you're blowing on it, it's going to cool differently than in between these tines. So now you have this star shrink pattern. You can see some little pips from where um, the sprues separated, but it does have less of the shrink line than the perfect sphere did. But you can see that, yeah, just the pattern is there a little bit. So clearly though, design support is working way better than standard generated support because you just get such a crisper amount of control of it that's 
very detailed and very defined. You generally don't want to go much smaller than 0.2 because you're going to end up with issues of the STLs uh, being fixed and thinking that there's an error in the actual model itself. So you don't want to do that. But there are a lot of ways of refining these. But there's also one last and final trick, which is a little bit of a cop out that I want to show you. So the warping issue seems like it's a problem with the actual geometry of the sphere, and there's not a lot of ways of getting around that even by having fully custom designed support. So the question might be, do you actually need a sphere? Now this is really important. You might not need a sphere, you might just simply need a curved object because if a sphere is giving you these sort of bottom deformations that are not really what you're looking for, then you might be able to just change the shape just a little bit to make it slightly oblong, start to make it a little bit oval because now you start to have a steeper incline. So with this one right here that's a little bit egg shaped, if we pop it off with all the exact same design features and then trim this down, We have a sphere over there again, and then we have the slightly egg-shaped one. And it's not a ton better, but you do kind of eliminate that large shrink ring because it is able to just move up more quickly. So since it's a steeper angle, the layers are able to stack on top of each other so that you don't have potential shrinkage or overhangs that can be a really big issue as compared to a regular sphere. But I would say from this, it's not really, really substantial. So there might still be better ways of getting it done, but let's go ahead and take it straight to the extreme. If we take this one and look at this, now you can see it's pretty darn crisp. But again, you have this initial steep area where you have a layer and then another layer way far out from the side. So trying to get a perfect sphere right off the bat is almost impossible without just flattening the edge. So hopefully you were able to learn a little bit about how to design spheres and all the things involved with it. Really, you're just dealing with a very complicated geometry when you're dealing with 3D printing. And regardless of the resolution in 3D printing, the smaller the sphere, the steeper the angles, the higher the overhangs, the more problems you can have. So while these are all tricks that can be used around designing support, making sure spacing is right, using sprues and that kind of thing, spheres are just very difficult by the very nature of the geometry. But there are a few ways to make them even crisper and hopefully you saw a few of these in this video. Have a great day everybody.